Uh, this is Two Echo Zero Bravo Mike Tango returning. Hi there YouTube, welcome to part six, the final part of my idiot's guide to building an all-star node. Today we're going to be finishing the build, setting it up and testing it. And I hope you really, really enjoy this video. Don't forget that during this whole series of videos, I've got a competition running so you can either win an all-star node or win all of the bits and bobs that you need to build your own all-star node. So do stay tuned right to the end of this video where you'll find a link to another video to enter that competition. Right, let's get on with the build. So our first job today is to take the front panel of the box, the project box that we've been working on. We'll need some sort of straight edge and I've got a right angle here as well, our switch and our LEDs. That switch is a push button switch to power down the radio. Once we've found the centre of the box, we're just going to mark out a couple of dots so that we know where we're going to put our switch, where that's going to be located and also where our three LEDs are going to be located at about a centimetre apart. They're five mil wide, so at a centimetre apart there'll still be a bit of a border around them. Once we've marked out exactly where we're going to drill our holes, we'll go out to the garage and make a bit of a mess. So we need a five mil drill bit for the LEDs. Make sure it doesn't spin too many times once you've got through the hole, otherwise it'll be too big and the LEDs will fall out. But uh, carefully taking the front of the box, we need to drill our three holes and make sure that the LEDs fit through them. So that's the first of the three holes drilled. And as you can see, it's perfect fit for our first LED. So drill the other two holes and make sure that each of them fit well. Just watch out for the swarf coming off that. It can be sharp, even though it is just plastic. And there we go, we've got a good snug fit for all three of our LEDs. Next we need a 16 millimeter bit. I'm using uh, a core bit here. It's a little bit more tricky to get through this one, but uh, that's for the switch to go in. And I think that's it. So back into the house, we need our three LEDs. We've got a green, a blue and a red. It doesn't actually matter what the color is. And then we're gonna put our push button switch through there and put a washer and a bolt on the back to hold it into place. It's probably best that the um, the positive and negative or the, the two sides of the switch go horizontally. And then I use the red LED as a power LED closest to the push button switch. A blue LED as a status indicator just to show that the sound card is working and online. And then the green LED at the end uh, as a push to talk so it's telling me when the Baofeng 888 is transmitting and therefore when I should be hearing audio. Once all those LEDs and the switches in place we need our last three GPIO wires. They've got a pin on one end and a socket on the other and I'm going to put one as you look at it on the left hand column on the very top one so that's next to the power lead going in and then leave three pins and then the other two on the next two pins down. And measuring them out to about the front of the box, I'm going to snip those wires off. And uh, there for the switch and the power LED. So the power LED uh, in this case has got three volts going into it through that green wire, and then the yellow and the orange are the switch. Uh, and uh, as you count them down, it's on pin five and six, although they're not numbered like that by Raspberry Pi, but it's the fifth and the sixth pin down on the left-hand column. So I've twisted the uh, cathode of each of the LEDs together, and I'm just trimming the anode off uh, so that it's a bit shorter. So the three cathodes, uh, I will solder together, and then using a little bit of black wire, I will add those to the Raspberry Pi USB port negative uh, blob of solder that I've got on there. So once I've soldered these LEDs together, they will all have the negative going in the same place. And again, by putting all the negatives together, it stops there being too much of a hum uh, on the uh, ground hum. Uh, just cover that up with some insulation tape so nothing shorts on it. And then we need some resistors. Now, I forgot to tell you about this resistor. It's a 330 ohm resistor, uh, so not a massive resistor. It probably wouldn't matter. They are 3 volt LEDs. I'm just using that to really prolong the life of the LED. But 330 ohm onto that green wire, so it takes the 3 volts out of the Raspberry Pi, drops it 330 ohms into the red, and then that uh, then 
has the negative going back to the Raspberry Pi. Bit of insulation on there so it doesn't shorten anything on the Raspberry Pi. And then my orange and yellow wire is for this push button. The Hamvoip system already has this configured so if you hold down that push button for six seconds it will carefully and safely shut down the Raspberry Pi giving you an audio indication that that is what it's doing. So once that's wired on that should now just work as soon as we fire up the Raspberry Pi if we were to hold that down it would turn off and then the negative cathode uh, wires from the LED need to go onto that USB socket just there. Bit of a fiddly one to solve. You need lots of heat to melt that again because of course it's on a big bit of metal which pulls the heat away. Next we need our 1K resistor. That's going to go on this blue one and uh, uh, and then the wire for that is actually the the wire from the CM108 that's nearest to the USB port. Um, so it's, as you can see, that wire that was quite fiddly to solder on in between the capacitor and the USB port. Uh, and it just needs a 1K to drop to safely work. And that will just flash constantly to show us that all is well with the CM108 and that it's responding properly. Uh, I'm going to bend that over and then just cover it with some insulation tape just so that nothing else touches those exposed wires. That just leaves the last one to do and that is... Uh, with this one I need a 4K7, that's uh, 4,700 ohm resistor again, trimming it down to size and soldering it on. Now I noticed as I did this that I've made a mistake on my CM108. So if you're following this step by step, the idiot's guide, well it's now proof I am an idiot, I've made a mistake and if you've been following it you've made the same mistake. But at least you can blame me for it. The other end of this wire is on the wrong port on the CM108. Instead of being on the middle one it needs to be moved over by one otherwise it won't work. Uh, when I tested this it wasn't working and I realised why it had too much resistance. So this wire here instead of being on this middle bit here uh, which is on the base of the transistor. It needs to be the other side of that 10K resistor. So it was a very quick job just to desolder and resolder. And with that done, we can now put our box together. So that slides on the front. The lid obviously goes on the top. And then in the box of the box, you should have had three screws, four screws and four feet. Uh, the feet just sort of snap off each other. So you end up with four of those and then the screw goes through them into the four screw holes on the bottom of your all-star node. So once you've got one, two, three, and the last one on there, tighten them up with a screwdriver uh, so that they are all nice and tight, and then your node build is complete. So applying the 12 volts DC, we're going to switch this on, and the red LED comes on instantly to show us that we've got power to our Raspberry Pi, Secondly, the blue light starts flashing to show us that our CM108 is working properly. And then lastly, the green light comes on whenever I should be able to be hearing something through the radio. As you can see, that is also working here. So now we need to do some tests to make sure that the audio is working properly. So what we need to do is put in our IP address of our node into a web browser and uh, just make sure that it's connected. Once it is, add the suffix forward slash supermon and that will load up supermon. And once we're into supermon, we need to log in using the username and password that we set up uh, a couple of videos ago. Once we've got into supermon, we need to log into the node that is used for an audio check. So it simply is a parrot node. It repeats whatever you say to it. It is 40894. And when we're connected to that, we can do a little test. Two Echo Zero, Bravo, Mike Tango, audio check. A little bit quiet. So to sort this issue out we need to go on to Putty using our login as root and our password as to whatever we set it up to be and once Putty is loaded we need to load up on here number 12 which is the USB setup. Go into option number 2 
uh, which is the uh, receive voice level, and this is a meter, so it needs to be somewhere between three and five kilohertz for to a normal zero voice. BMT audio check. So as you could see there, it was miles too low. Uh, that's currently set at 500, so I'm going to up it to 800, and then we'll try it again. Two e zero BMT. So that's audio still check. well under the three kilohertz lower limit so i'm going to up it again to 999 that's the maximum volume that we can possibly use let's try again 2e0 bmt audio check that's still a little bit low so i'm going to reset it back to 500 and the reason for that is because there is a boost that i can do uh, by going out of this menu here and going back into menu B. By toggling menu B on that, we'll have now boosted it all. So when I go back into option two, I can two, try zero, again. BMT, wow, okay, that's check. off the scale. So that's far too loud this time. You can see from the visualization, it's constantly above, and you can even hear it peaking out. So let's drop it down to 400. 2E0 BMT audio check. That's close. I think that's still a little bit loud at the peak. So go down to 350. And let's try one last time. 2E0 BMT audio check. So the main volume is somewhere between 3 and 5 kilohertz, peaking above that and dipping below it. So that's absolutely fine. So it's O to close this menu, and then W to save it. And that saves everything onto the node so that it's now remembered the tuning that we need for the right volume for our all-star node. So we can come out of putty and end that, and then we're going to disconnect from the uh, parrot node and connect to something with actual humans on instead. So disconnect from here, and I'm going to go on Hubnet, um, which I, I happen to know off the top of my head because I connect to it relatively regularly at 41223. And, ah, an American accent. So we're on Hubnet. Let's wait for a pause and have an audio test. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Thanks, Paul. That's really helpful. Um, uh, anyone who's not mobile, I wonder if someone else could come in and just give me a bit of a, uh, an audio check, see how I'm doing. Uh, don't be too critical, otherwise I might cry, but uh, <laughs> I'd love to find out how I'm doing. 2 0 BMT. Yeah, Ah, oh, that's wonderful, Brian. Thank you so much. Right, I'll uh, I'll finish what I'm doing now. 73s, 2 Echo 0, Bravo, Mike Tango, off and clear. So the last thing that we need to do is just check this switch works. When I hold this down for six seconds, the radio should give a report and then close down the Pi. The system is hogging and powering down. Goodbye. So after the blue light stopped flashing, it takes about five seconds for the Raspberry Pi to finish. That light will stay on though until we flick the switch on the back of the radio. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've liked this video. I hope you've liked this whole series as we've built this all-star node together. If you've liked this video, do click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And at the end of this video, enter the competition to win your own all-star node or to win all of the bits and bobs to build your own. Thank you again for watching and tuning in. My name's Ben. I'm 2 Echo Zero. Bravo, Mike Tango, off and clear. 7-3. Uh, this is 2 Echo Zero Bravo Mike Tango returning.